Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel, the Lexus channel for us. And if you're a Lexus fan, make sure you check out the videos on my uh, channel. But well, we'll get started, or probably get started. Uh, this is the 2022 model Lexus UX 300E Takumi, which in the UK is the highest spec. It's the electric version of the Lexus UX. Uh, so we'll start off, this is the key. Looks like a normal the Lexus key. I do notice we've got a little AC button at the bottom. We've got a boot release button and then we've got unlock and lock. It does have keyless entry and keyless go. Uh, we'll start in front of the car. We near Takumi. We've got the tri-LED headlights up front. We've got the signature daytime running light. We've got the spindle grill. We near Takumi, we also get the 360 degree camera. So we've got a little camera up the front. We've got the green in the number plate to let you know it's electric. We've also got the blue around the Lexus, which typically would mean the hybrids, like the IS 300H. Um, Lexus have kept that for the electric one. This particular car got metallic black paint, which hopefully we can see the specs in the sunlight. Quite like the alloy wheels in this one, kind of diamond cut to tone. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that. In real life these ones are 18 inch um so the takumi gets the slightly larger wheels which does affect the top range i think the claimed range for the takumi is about 190 miles versus 196 on the standard one and if you got a painted color car you would see this is two-tone but black on black uh, there we go you can see the metallic flakes there uh, we do have electric on the door cutter down there in the rear doors, the hybrid one is the hybrid there. We have a quick look in the rear, we even looks like that, like it's there. Uh, so we can go ahead and open the boot. If it wants to behave, there we go. And inside the electric UX, we actually get more boot space than the hybrid model. Uh, so we get about 300. And 67 litres of boot space and that's versus 320 in the hybrid so interesting you get a little bit more space in the electric version of the internal combustion <laughs> model of a car and a little bit of wee hook so you can put your shopping bags and they fold away as well if you wanted them flush and not a huge fan of this flimsy partial shelf but that's the same in the other UX let that slowly go down as you can see there's a rear camera 300D. In this car, being electric, it uses a 54 kilowatt hour battery, uh, so it's about 201 horsepower, 0 to 60 in about 7.5 seconds. It is front wheel drive only, and we will get that when we do a full driving review. Inside the car, again, typical Lexus fare telling you the floor mats what we're driving 300D, Lexus on the silver there. Door card is pretty much just standard UX. Uh, this particular car is just over £52,000 in the UK and it is still got the UX, standard UX kind of rubber material up here. Uh, I think that would like to be a little bit more premium just because of the price point, but it is well built, squishy bits and the touch points and you'd like to think it's going to last being a Lexus. These seats, because again the Takumi spec, we get real weather and we also get electric adjustment, lumbar support, etc. And we've got a whole host of buttons on the inside. It is quite a hot, sunny day, uh, which is a change of pace for Scotland, but we do get the nice sunroof. <laughs> Start the car up. As you can see, starting. There we go. I quite like having things on auto, uh, just because this car offers it. So you can, on a warm day like today, you can just literally have everything on auto. So auto steering wheel for heat, uh, heat and cooled seats. Uh, climate control is all nice, easy to reach buttons as you can see, like so. Fan speed, you can increase it, decrease it. Quite a neat wee feature. Um, I have noticed they've got rid of the CD player um, on this one, but we do have Mark Levson sound system. Down here you've got your wireless charging. And then you've got your two big cup holders. And then down here you've got your auto hold. A funky gear lever, uh, which reminds me of the one at the CT. So you hold that down for regenerative braking and then you can hold it forward like that for your reverse there's your camera popping up down for drive but if I push there and then down it gives you the regen braking there 
and you can change that on the paddle. So the plus and minus for that is to deal with how aggressive you want the regen braking. As you can see, the little arrow's going up just about here-ish. We do have a drill opening center console here, uh, USB ports and auxiliary cable lined with the fuzzy stuff. Like so. I do like the light interior, uh, a bit better than being black on black. Um, and you get a little bit of brown on top. I have seen one on YouTube where it's like kind of like a white and blue interior, and this is blue up here, so you must be able to configure that online. Um, we'll do a little bit of glove box review. It's awfully damped, it's just scratchy plastic in there. And in front of us here, we've got kind of an adaptation of the standard UX. So instead of that being your petrol gauge, we've got a wee electric uh, plug-in there. I did have 165 miles on a full charge. I've drove it a little bit today. And I think up here probably where your temperature gauge would be for the car's engines. I think they've just put 300E in there and pretty configurable. Uh, it's nice, easy to read. You can put it into eco mode just by twisting this knob here and you can put it into sport mode, but nothing's really changing. As you can see down below, it's just um, going to blue for eco red for sport, and uh, normal mode is just black. Traction control off, if you did want that, but can't see you doing that in a front wheel drive electric car. Down the right here, you've got your things like your heads up display you can turn on and off, so if you can see that just about there. And then you've got your camera, which I think is quite cool, 360 degree camera, ideal for parking, curbs, etc. Steering wheel itself, nice and soft and squidgy, um, makes it all kind of relaxing. This Lexus isn't trying to be sporty, it's all about kind of relaxing comfort. Uh, on the left here is things like this instrument display here, what we can do. Three kilowatt hours there, you can just kind of controls everything inside there. You've got your volume controls, phone call. Right hand side is your adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, a radar cruise control, you can set that here. Uh, so that's pretty decent. And then everything else in the car is pretty standard Lexus. Uh, so here you've got your auto folding mirrors, um, lock, child lock for the windows. I do like the fact that the driver's button's got this little ridge there. So if you put your fingers on it and you were driving on the road, you could feel what one is the front driver's button. I did want to touch on the Mark Levson sound system that you can see the wee kind of tweeters up there. However, I don't want to get any copyright, but if you like put that, It does sound quite good in here. Um, Legroom, not too bad. I said I'm 5'11", plenty of adjustment for myself. I think this is an ideal two-person car. Because you've got plenty of headroom, uh, plenty of width, and I think two people would get comfortable in here. Maybe if, like, if you've got kids, they'd be fine in the back. Uh, but I wouldn't be carrying four adults in here or doing this for like an Uber or something, just because rear space in the back is quite tight. Uh, we'll jump in there now, actually. Keep that you throw everything, but... We're in the back here, uh, so that's set up in my driving position. As you can see, leg room already looking a bit neat. Um, oh. So, because the floor seems to be raised, because the batteries are under the centre here, because uh, the hybrid one, they're under the back seat spreaders in this car, they're fully uh, under here. It feels like I'm perched up, like my knees are kind of touching there. I've also got no wee pocket there, like the passenger gets a wee pocket for your map or iPad etc there's just nothing here is it quite high uh, you can say hello to yourself <laughs> get a good view at the front as an adult you're going to be fine with these windows I think if you were a small child looking up uh, the tinted windows and the high kind of belt line you might not like that but the child might not like that uh, ear vents back here child friendly USB charging ports everybody's gonna be happy charging the iPad we've even got heated seats back here uh, for winter so keep everybody happy I would say, ideally, this is ideal for two small adults or young children back here. You can even get child seats plugged in there. And you can pull this down and there you go, there's your cup holders. However, you do have with the higher floor and that transmission hump, it's not going to be the best situation here for three adults. I think going to like a wee short trip, but you're not really wanting to do that regularly. Anyways, I'll flip the camera around and let you see. Headroom's not terrible, but like two fingers above me, but yeah, you're kind of perched and giving me double chins here, but <laughs> this is what it's like in the back of the UX. 
And if you are wondering, the, the materials in the back aren't the same as the front there. Scratch here, um, which is disappointing. It seems to have saved a lot of money in the back. Charging port, uh, this one's hanging in. This is your home charging port there, and then fast charging that is the other side. Like so. And now we're talking about charging. I've led, believe what I laid online, it takes about eight hours to charge. Uh, I think it's 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours to charge at home. And the DC charger at the other side, about 50 kilowatts, 80% can get charged in about 50 odd minutes. So it's not terrible. I just want to say thanks very much for watching this video on the Lexus 300e. Uh, it's kind of like a first impression video. I will get around to doing a full review. Uh, so make sure you subscribe, check out the channel, check out my other videos if you're a Lexus fan. And yeah, if you're interested in this car, make sure you check out the channel for my full in-depth review of the car. As always, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Ciao.